In this lesson, we'll learn how to create Fluid websites that look amazing on any screen size. Here our H6 isn't changing in size at all, but the larger sizes become more and more compact as we narrow our screen width. And to do this, we're going to use this Fluid Builder I created specifically for this lesson. It'll help us define any Webflow variable, what that should be across different screen sizes, how it should scale. We even have things like this group of headings that we can define a type scale for. I could create a display large font size, choose where I want that to fall in the type scale, how these uh, fonts should scale between breakpoints, and also how extreme should the type scale actually be between sizes. So let's learn how to set this up. Usually for Fluid Designs and Webflow, everything shrinks at the same rate. This means our small elements can become too small and the large elements aren't quite small enough. We have to manually adjust them across breakpoints. The larger our size becomes, the more of its original size it should lose as we shrink down to mobile. One thing you'll notice is we get this little warning here. So if we were using this variable for font size, then it wouldn't allow the user to zoom up to two times its original size like it's required for accessibility. So because I'm not using this for font size, I don't have to worry about it. But if I was, I would want to make sure that this, uh, the jump in between the two sizes isn't too extreme. And the same goes even if we were just using regular breakpoints with no fluid type, we could run into the same issue by setting three room on desktop or one room on tablet. It would be too extreme of a jump uh, when the user zooms. So now that we have that set, we can also add in any other variables we want. We could delete these variables. So if I have a custom variable for like logo width, and I want to do something on that where it goes from like eight rem on desktop to maybe three rem on mobile, and I could create that variable, I could put it wherever I want. Uh, I'm just going to remove it for now. And that's how we can set these up. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and it's adding in all the changes we made here in this URL. So if we ever want to come back to our settings, we can. Now for the custom code, I'll just open this up. I'll open up the responsive embed. I can go ahead and delete pretty much everything out of here and I'll just paste in the code we copied. So it's going to replace all those static adaptive sizes with fluid sizes instead for things like our section padding and all these other variables I'm using everywhere throughout the site. So if I go ahead and preview this, it would stop scaling up when we reach our containers max width, and then it'll stop scaling down somewhere on smaller screen sizes. Now, all of our font sizes like this H3 font size or our text font size, they're all linked to the general size folder here. So because these sizes are fluid, now all of our font sizes throughout the site are also fluid. But if we want more control over our font sizes specifically, we can scroll down to our font size section here and I'll start with the heading sizes. So these are all the heading sizes. I'll set this H6 to be one rim on desktop and also one rim on mobile. But these other sizes are being defined by the size of the H6. So notice if I increase this H6, all of these start increasing. If I decrease it, all of those decrease. And we're using a type scale here. This is the type scale for desktop. So each heading will be incremented based off that type scale. So if I decrease this type scale, notice how we have less difference between our largest and our smallest size. If I increase the type scale like this, so then we'll notice we start to have more difference between the largest and smallest size. So what we could do is leave our H6 the same across both breakpoints and only change the type scale. So we start with a larger type scale on desktop and decrease it some on mobile. And what that will do is make sure that our H6 doesn't shrink in that the larger a size is, the more of its size that it loses. So it kind of just levels out our different heading sizes like we'd want on mobile. And I could maybe increase that a little bit, but we get something around that point. Now, in addition to just changing the type scale, we can also add fluidness to this as well. So not only will the H6, um, not only will the type scales change, but the H6 will also even shrink between breakpoints, which means all the other sizes will shrink as well. Um, so we could do a little bit of both. I generally like to leave them at the same across both breakpoints though. Now, if I add another thing down here, like maybe I'll call this my display, maybe display large font size. Notice it's smaller than the H6 because it's under that H6. So I just need to drag this up to the top um, above the regular display. And that way its font size is also larger than that regular display. 
Now at any point, I could change the size that these are scaling from. They're scaling from the H6 right now, but I could change this to scale from the H3. So maybe it's 2.5 rim across both breakpoints. The problem we're gonna run into here is it works perfectly fine for anything above this size, like so. This is becoming smaller, becoming smaller all the way through. But when we head down to anything below this size, it actually becomes larger on the smaller breakpoints just based on how type scales work. And that's not really what we want here. So I like to always start my scale based off the smallest size within my list, use that as the anchor. So everything just increases up from that point. And I'll leave this set to one as well. So this is all for our um, for our heading styles. And what I'll actually do right now is make this much more extreme, just so we get a really strong visual of what's happening here. I know this is not quite passing there, but I'm just going to leave that for now. And what we'll do is scroll down to the second group, which is for any text related variables. So this here is used for like a um, paragraph main font size, our paragraph large, paragraph small. And this is separated out so that we can control all our paragraph styles independently. We might need to put them at a slightly different text or type scale depending on what we're doing and different font size like this one's 14 pixels. And here what I might want to happen is that I might want this large paragraph to actually skip a level because it's each being incremented by this type scale. So what I could do is add a variable here. I could put it in between my main paragraph and my large, and it adds it, of course, to the code right there, that variable name. But if I just go ahead and delete everything from this field, it'll remove it down here. So we're not seeing it in this list. But the advantage here is now that this text large is actually two levels larger than the main text. So we're able to skip a scale there. And we'll just make sure we're only changing our scale across breakpoints. I'm not really going to change the size. So now I can just copy all this code. I can head back to Webflow. I can open up my custom code. And I'll want to add this into the responsive just so we get a good idea of how this is going to work. So I can go ahead and save. And notice how large this heading, large heading actually is. It's stopping whenever we hit our max width, which is what we want. But as we start to shrink down, the larger is going to lose more and more of its size, whereas the H6 isn't changing at all. And it's just making more space on smaller screen sizes like we need there. And this is just a beautiful way to handle fluid uh, text and Webflow. And that's just a high level of how to use this new fluid calculator that I built for Webflow.